today is October 19, 2010, and we're interviewing Mr. Darren Oliver. Mr. Oliver is 42 years old. He was born on June 5, 1968. My name is Trayton, and you're and she's and Katie. Katie. And we'll be in the interview. Okay. Mr. Oliver is from Fountain, Indiana. Mr. Oliver, could you state for the recording what one branch you served in? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question one more time? Could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? Oh, okay. I was in the United States Navy. Is and, uh, and did you ask what wars I served in? Or? Branch of service. Oh, branch yeah. of service. Just United States Navy. Mm -hmm. And war. And war. I was, uh, while I was in the Navy, uh, is when Desert Shield and Desert Storm was going on. Uh, the first time we had some conflicts with Iraq, if you recall. My uh, uncle um, had to go to Iraq for like a year and some months for that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What Good was your rank? My rank, the top rank that I uh, had received was E5, and that was called a Petty Officer Second Class. Mm -hmm. Where did you serve? Um, I served uh, initially uh, after all my boot camp and my technical schools. Uh, I was sent to uh, NAS, Na which is, stands for Naval Air Station Oceana, uh, and that's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Do you know where Virginia's at? Yeah. Well, I will tell you that uh, when I got my first orders, I couldn't recall exactly where Virginia was. You know, um, but. Uh, uh, that's where I lived, and I, I pretty much stayed in Virginia Beach the whole time I was in the Navy. I was able to stay out there. I served uh, seven years while I was in the Navy, so that's where I was. For yeah, for ten years. You have a pretty good uncle, don't He's, you? Um, what's the highest thing for like the like head of stuff? Oh yeah, is is he in the Navy or Army or? In the army, I'm not real familiar with all their different ranks and stuff, but I'm sure if he's been in ten years, he's he has some higher rank and is in charge of a lot of stuff. He's in Hawaii. Oh, very nice. How many years were you in the service? Oh, okay. Well, like I said, I I, I enlisted in 1987, uh, and, and I came right out of high school, uh, and it was somewhere around May or sometime right after high school was out. Uh, and I enlisted and I went to uh, boot camp in Chicago, actually. Well, really Great Lakes, Illinois is where I went to boot camp, but it was close to Chicago. Um, and uh, I, like I said, I went to uh, serve in NAS Oceana with a fighter squadron. I worked on F-14 Tomcats and I lived there for pretty close to seven years. And I will. I got out of the Navy in 1994. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you served in the Navy, right? Where were you living at the time? Before the Navy, well, I actually was born and raised in Austin, Texas. Okay, I wasn't from Indiana. Uh, I. Uh, I lived all around the Austin area and, and uh, I, I actually graduated from a small school outside Austin, Texas and the, the town is called Blanco uh, and I graduated in 1987, way before a lot of you were born, wasn't it? Yeah, way before. Yeah, I knew of my uncle oh. who lived in Texas most of his life Did he? moved to Iraq for a while then yeah. moved to Hawaii. Isn't that crazy? I was going to interview him but then he had to back out because he, he, he got stationed Oh, yeah. So it's a it's a life. It keeps you on the move a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, while I was stationed there, um, I like I said, I, I learned how to work on F-14 Tomcats, which are airplanes. Have you ever seen the movie Top Gun? You ever watch yeah. that? That's an old 80s movie. Yeah, I've seen Pearl Harbor before. Yeah, you've seen Pearl Harbor. Well, that was way before my time, too, okay? But... Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I work... I put uh, bombs and missiles uh, rockets and loaded guns, aircraft wow, guns, and worked on weapons and stuff. And stuff heavy. Yeah, it, they were very heavy. Uh, but that's what I worked on. And so I worked on planes and I was assigned to aircraft carriers. Uh, 
my squadrons was was my first squadron was VF 142, which we were called the Ghost Riders. So yeah, that's kind of a cool name, and they all have these crazy names, okay? And uh, but uh, that was my squadron that I was assigned to. When my ship would leave, our squadron would leave NAS Virginia, and then we would go aboard an aircraft carrier. Have you seen uh, movies with aircraft carriers and stuff? Well, my first aircraft carrier was the USS Eisenhower, and it was a nuclear carrier. And uh, you know, like I said, I worked on planes, worked on the flight deck. Uh, we would launch planes off. We would recover them. You know, we'd load them up with bombs, missiles, rockets, whatever they needed, more guns, and then send them on their way again. So, it was a very exciting job. Did you ever have to like jump out of a plane? <laughs> no, I never had to jump out of any planes. <laughs> um, how did you happen to serve in this war? I'm sorry. How did you happen to serve? And the war, well, we just happened to get uh, caught up in, in some conflicts. Actually, when I when I first came into the the Navy, uh, America was not at war with anybody really. I mean, we had little conflicts uh, here and there with like Libya. I don't know. I know you don't remember the Line of Death or any of that stuff. But uh, in Libya, the dictator there says, you know, I don't want any American ships to cross this Line of Death. The border. It was. It really was. It was a border into a Gulf area, and he was threatening that if American ships or any American, he would sink the ships. Okay. Well, what would we do? We would cross that line. Okay, and we would go in there and just kind of. I don't know if we were taunting him, but we were just showing him that we we weren't uh, going to follow those rules. Yeah, we're not scared of that. So I was actually in during that kind of time at first. Okay, and uh, so we kind of. Um, we kind of worked on Libya a little bit just to show them that we weren't afraid, but that really wasn't a war time. Uh, it wasn't until uh, Iraq invaded Kuwait uh, did things start to get exciting for the time when I was in the Navy at that time. Uh, and that started a uh, pre-war called Desert Shield, okay, uh, and we were just having a build-up to a war with Iraq at that time. Uh, and then once uh, Iraq did not conform to the rules, then we started Desert Storm, and that's kind of when we started a war conflict with I've Iraq. Seen that. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. it. And it was real quick. Uh, it was it was a real fast war. Uh, at that time, uh, it was with uh, uh, during President Bush, not the Bush that we remember, but his dad. He was the president at that time. And uh, um, we basically just ran Iraq out of Kuwait, and basically the war was kind of over then. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is it true that there are big spiders in Iraq? Big spiders in Iraq. You know, I never actually, I never actually got off my ship to go into Iraq. Okay, most of the time I was on a ship uh, out in the waters. Uh, I was in the Indian Ocean, kind of in that area, uh, and in the Red Sea. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I never made it into Iraq. I'm sure there's some big spiders, though. Is that what your uncle said? Yeah. yeah I can Im I can imagine that there would be very big spiders mm -hmm. there. Yeah. <laughs> what were you doing before you were drafted or enlisted? Well, like I said, I was really, uh, I grew up in Texas. Uh, I, I came right out of high school. Um, you know, I was, a young, I was a young man that didn't exactly know what I wanted to do when I grew up, you know. Uh, I just knew that I didn't want to kind of, I didn't want to be, uh, I hate to say the word stuck in my little town that I lived in, but that was just something I really wanted to see what was out there, you know. But I didn't exactly know what I wanted to be when I grew up. So the military was just a great option for me, okay. Um, it allowed me, one, just to really grow up. Um, and, uh, it, you know, they, you, know we, you always coin these phrases, you know, it taught me how to be a man. You know, okay, I was just kind of a kid. Uh, you just joined it without, you just joined it? I just joined it right out of high school. Now, I did have jobs and stuff when I was in high school. You know, I worked with horses and stuff down in Texas. I worked on ranches. Uh, I built a lot of fences and stuff, you know, growing up. Um, the community that I grew up in was kind of a ranching community. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of cowboys kind of in that area. Uh, and even today, when I go back home and visit, you know, it's just kind of a cowboy area. It's a ranch area, so 
Uh, but that's, that's where I grew up, and that's what I was doing before I joined the Navy. But I was very young. I was 19 years old when I joined the Navy. So. Did anyone else in the military? Actually, my dad was in the Army uh, during the Vietnam War. Okay, So, yeah, I mean, I had some uh, family members. I actually had an, an uncle also that was in the Navy. Uh, he was a CB in the Navy, which uh, is kind of like a construction guy builds things like bridges and and stuff so I you know I think that was a big influence for me too is my uncle was a very big influence in my life uh, and to see uh, that he had served his country you know proudly uh, just made me want to want to do that too I, I always remember seeing the picture of him you know yeah and uh, so that that kind of steered my direction a little bit yeah. my brother's mine person that I looked up to because he served in the army and he loved it and said that it's not easy but it's kind of fun. Right. So right. That makes me more joy. Yeah, it is. It's you know, I highly encourage it. And like I said, for me, I didn't have a lot of uh uh direction as to what I wanted to do when I grew up. You know, I really didn't know. Um uh, I just knew that there was a lot of the world to see out there and that I could learn a lot from it. And uh, and I also felt like it was as a as a young man I felt like it was my obligation to serve my country, and I don't know if that was just the way I was raised, or what. But I, I still kind of feel that way today. I think it was a good thing. It, it was a really good thing for me, and and I encourage my sons uh, to do the same. In fact, I have, my oldest son is a senior this year at Southwood, okay, and uh, he has applied to Annapolis. Uh, which is uh, the Naval Academy and I'm very encouraged by that and I'm pretty proud of him that he, he wants to serve as well as just like I did and so I don't know if I've influenced him kind of like that I never really pushed him but I think he feels like you know this is something that he should do for his country That's the, I love that white mm -hmm. that's our house pants mm -hmm. and um, half the boys in our, in our um, cottage is what they call them mm -hmm. want to be in the army or the military mm -hmm. they said that it Right, exactly, and that's that's kind of where I was too, and I and I highly encourage uh, young men who don't know what they want to do. Now, there's some guys out there that you know they work very hard in school and they know exactly what they want to do when they grow up, and that's great, that's a good thing. But if you don't, the military is a very good a good option. Okay, um, like I said, I I grew up a lot in the military. Uh, taught me how to be a man. Taught me how to be organized. Uh, taught me how to be patient. You know, you got to be patient to be in the military. Mm -hmm. And some of my military veterans would uh, would very much agree with that. That uh, we do. We always say, "Hurry up and wait." Okay. There's a lot of just kind of standing around and hurry up and waiting, and they would understand that. But uh, uh, but I very much enjoy the Navy. What other questions do you have? Can you tell me about adapting to military life? Uh, adapting to military life? Really for me it was kind of easy, okay, because uh, I needed structure, you know. And I was kind of, the way I grew up, you know, it was somewhat structured, okay. Uh, I knew that uh, if you just kind of kept your mouth closed and you just did, you know, what they asked you to do, uh, that you were going to be okay. You know, you wouldn't be in trouble. Do That's right. <laughs> And you know what happens when uh, they make you do 100 push-ups because of something that I did? They make the whole uh, platoon or the whole team do 100 push-ups, see? You don't just get punished for your own actions. Your whole team gets punished, okay? So that kind of teaches you real quick that, you know what, I just kind of want to get along. You know, I don't want to hurt my team out. And, uh, you know, and that kind of helps you as far as your structure. If they get mad? Would they get mad? You bet they would get mad, yep. And like I said, for me it was easy because I just did what I was told. I kept my mouth closed and uh, I just learned, you know. Went to classes, did good. And uh, so yeah, it was it was an easy process for me. And and I, I really, before I, I went into the, the Navy, I was really prepared. I was in really good shape, you know. I ran and I, I, I swam in a river and and uh, uh, I rode a bicycle a bunch, so I was really ready. 
and uh, so it was a it was an easy process for me. Okay. What else you have? How did you choose the branch of, ser of service you served? Okay, like I like I was telling you earlier, you know, I was I was very proud of my uncle and his service to the Navy, and you know, I just grew up kind of just looking at his picture all the time. It was, he was always in his Navy uniform, and I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, it's a little different. You know what the Navy uniform looks like? It's a little bit different than the Army and the Marines, and it's um, it's got a white hat. You know, it's uh, but. Uh, uh, that was kind of one of my major influences was my uncle. I also had a friend that was a couple of years older than me uh, that joined the Navy before I did. He graduated, uh, well actually a year before I did. So he had a year's worth of service before I uh, enlisted and, and he was kind of an influence too. I saw what the Navy was doing in his life and uh, I just thought, you know, let's just do that. It just sounds like a good thing to me. I read lots of good books. When you're out at sea, um, I would go out to sea for six months at a time sometimes. Uh, and we would have one television uh, for about mm, about 200, 200 men, okay? Do you ever argue about television at your house with brothers and sisters? Yeah. We'll modify that by a couple of hundred, okay? So, uh, you know, the television, you just kind of watch what was on. Uh, but yes, there was a lot of time to read books, and I'm not really a person that reads a lot of books. You know, if I if I have that choice to watch television, I kind of take the easy way out. But uh, while I was out at sea, I read a lot of uh, Tom Clancy books, which is uh, he's kind of a uh, a military uh, writer, and I I very much enjoyed his books. Uh, John Grisham, you ever heard of him? Uh, he writes a lot of kind of lawyer books and stuff, and uh, little mysteries that way. I'm reading a mystery now called Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship is, yeah, actually, isn't there a movie called Ghost Ship? Yeah. Is that the same thing based on that book kind of? Yeah, I already read that. Yeah, but I, I liked uh, I liked those books, and I read all of them I could, you know. I like mystery books, so it was good. Yeah. Okay. What's your next question? What kind of training did you have? What kind of training? Well, like I said, I went to basic training uh, in Great Lakes, Illinois, and they just basically teach you how uh, how to adapt to military life very quickly. Okay, uh, and I'm trying. I can't remember if it was nine or thirty. I think it was like thirteen weeks of training. Okay, uh, a lot of running, a lot of marching, uh, and. Uh, a lot of classroom kind of stuff that way just to kind of teach you the basics about the military. From there I went on to uh, uh, Millington, Tennessee which is just outside of Memphis. Uh, you know where that's at? Where Elvis lives? Um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle lives there. Well Elvis is kind of gone okay but uh, but that's where Elvis, you know Memphis, Tennessee was kind of a okay, that's where he's famous for. Yeah I, I like Elvis too so. Um, but I went to training there to learn how to be an aviation ordinanceman, and that's what I, uh, what my rank, my rating was. Okay, my rank was an E5 or a petty officer second class. My rating was an aviation ordinanceman. So they would call it my my rank would be an A02. Okay, uh, but that's where I received my training. I learned how to uh, take care of weapons uh, like bombs and rockets and missiles and how to work on guns, different machine guns for, that airplanes carry, um, and how to work on the weapon systems uh, that deploy those those type of weapons too. So it was a little bit of a technical training um, and I'd say it was probably three or four months worth of training there. It felt like it. I don't remember the exact amount of time but and then from there once you complete that school then they send you to the fleet okay with the fleet being the actual Navy okay uh, I went to my first squadron VF 142 uh, and when you get there there's uh, they call it on the job training okay they send you to your work center your shop uh, and you start to learn even more uh, about your aircraft and stuff and kinda it was probably about a year after that then I went to an extended uh, program called FRAMP and uh, it's just a, a more detailed class training on uh, the planes that I worked on. 
uh, which was the F-14. And so there's a lot of training, a lot of school. Um, so that was kind of a lot of my training. And uh, I enjoyed it. I, I liked working on planes. It was good. It was good training. Did you get any friends while you were doing it? I had friends from all over this country, I'm telling you, and all over the world. I had wonderful friends. Um, the thing about the Navy is, you know, they keep you moving all the time, you know. So uh, one, one bad thing that I didn't like is that once you make a really good friend, uh, usually their time was up or my time was up, so we would have to move, you know. But really, you have good friends. And in fact, I'm still in contact with some of them today. I have not been, you know, I've been out of the Navy for close to probably 18 years now. And uh, I still keep in contact with some of those friends. So yeah, lots of good friends from everywhere. Where did you serve? Where did I serve? Uh, like I said, once again, it was in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, and then I served on an aircraft carrier with my fighter squadron, BF-142, on the Eisenhower. Um, I did four years worth of sea duty, okay, where I would, I would go out to sea a lot during that four years. Uh, I re-enlisted uh, after my time was done, and I was able to do two years on shore duty. But I stayed in Virginia Beach, and I worked at another squadron, called VF-43, and I worked on their planes for two years, uh, and I had one more year. When I re-enlisted, I re-enlisted for three years, okay? Uh, when I was done with that, I had to go back to the fleet, to the carriers, uh, and work again, and that was on the USS America, in VF-102 was that squadron, so, and I served in, uh, most of the time it was all overseas in Europe and the Mediterranean. Uh, area, so that's where we went. Okay. Actions or duties away from the front line. Actions and duties away from the front line. Um, like when you weren't doing your job, like you were doing like on the front. Oh, what was I doing then? Well, a lot of it was. Uh, uh, I had met my wife while I was out in Virginia Beach, uh, and and my wife is from here, and she grew up in the fountain, and actually she went to this school. She went to Southwood High School. Uh, her mom was a teacher here. Uh, and uh, you, do you remember Mrs. Preston? Did you ever have her? This is my first year. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, I've been here my whole, yeah. been here my whole life. Your whole life? Well, my, my wife's parents are both teachers, So, uh, but my wife grew up here. And I met my wife while I was serving in the military. So that kind of explains how did a guy from Texas get to Indiana, right? Because you're wondering, how did he get all the way up here? But, uh, you know, in your off time, it was kind of like a normal life. You know, you go home. I had a house that uh, my wife and I rented. Uh, we had our first son uh, while I was in the Navy. And, like I said, he, he goes to school over at Southwood High School. He's a senior this year. Um, but uh, it's kind of a normal life, you know. When you're not working, you go go home and you enjoy the things that you do when you go home. Uh, but like I said, sometimes we would have to go to sea for a long time. So we would have to be away from our families sometimes for up to six months. So it's kind of, it was hard. You must have never seen my brother or uncle it's been at least a year or Yeah, two. they really spend a long time now. Uh, when, when I was in the Navy, six months felt like a long time, but uh, our great servicemen today are spending a year 15 months. I mean, they're spending a long time away from their family, and I commend them very much for that. That's that's very hard. It's hard for family life uh, to do that, uh, but it's just very important, and, and they do a wonderful job. When you were in the war, did you have any friendships formed? Um, I, you know, I always worked around uh, the guys that I work with. You know, I mean, we all work together. It was teamwork. Uh, but yeah, some very good friendships uh, you form with with uh, men that you work with. But yeah, sure. How did you stay in touch with those back home? Uh, really, you know, at that time, it, a lot of it was just by mail. You know, um, I'm always interested in kind of keeping up with what's going on uh, today 
with the military, you know they do email out there now, you know? And you might not understand a life without email or the computer, do you? But uh, there was really, the internet was very, very new when I was in the Navy, and there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, communications that way. And there wasn't really any computers in the work centers. Uh, so uh, the way we kept contact was with our family was through mail. And uh, we would just, we would be so excited to see a mail plane come because we knew that there was possibly a letter in there for us, you know, at night. And that was just a wonderful thing. Sometimes when we would pull in the ports, I would be in Spain, uh, Italy, France. Uh, I went to England one time. Uh, I went to Israel. I went to Turkey. Uh, I'm trying to think of everywhere where I've been overseas. But when we would pull in there, we would stay sometimes a week or two while we were there. So it gave us an opportunity to get off the ship uh, and to look around that country a little bit. But at the same time, we were able to call home. Uh, so I would be able to talk to my wife and my family uh, every now and then. So that was that was a, a good thing. Uh, very expensive phone calls, though, you can imagine. I mean, we, it was very, we didn't have cell phones back then. Uh, and now I understand that they, uh, you know, some of them talk to their families, can talk to their families every night, either by computer or cell phone or... So that's kind of a nice thing, but that's how we did it. What did you do for recreation? Oh, for recreation kind of things? Uh, I would lift weights and stuff while I was on the ship. I would work out that way. Um, you could actually, have, you've seen how large a, an aircraft carrier is, haven't you? You know, it's just very big. You can run around the top of the aircraft carrier when there's not plane operations going on. So I would do stuff like that. Um, I would read books, um, like we were talking about earlier. Um, I would make trips to the ice cream shop. Okay, that's pretty good. What's that? Newspapers. Newspapers? Yeah, we would read newspapers and what was going on. I've seen this thing where they just roll these two dice and see what the number is. Yeah, there's a lot of little games like that that go on. I never liked that kind of activity. I didn't like really gambling and that kind of stuff. But yeah, there was games like that. Some cards. I played a lot of cards. So that's kind of what we did for recreation. Where were you, s where, were you still overseas when the war ended? If not, where were you? Uh, when the war ended, I was actually uh, back home in Virginia Beach, I believe, when it was over. So uh, I think that's I think that's the question in it. Where was you at? Okay. How did you return home? How did I return home? On your ship. Oh yeah, I would always come back on the ship. We would leave out of Norfolk, Virginia, and we would sail uh, across the Atlantic Ocean into the Mediterranean. Uh, and during the wartime, uh, we would go through the Suez Canal and either hang out in the Red Sea. That way, remember Moses parted the Red Sea? Do you remember that? Your Bible stories? Yeah. yeah, that was kind of a cool thing. Yeah, remember when he parted the Red Sea? I was, well, I wasn't there at the time when he did that, but I was in the Red Sea. So. He was in Bible study. Yeah, well, <laughs> so that's an interesting part of the world like that over there. Um, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, when we would come back, there would be huge receptions, okay? There would be lots of people on the pier, and everybody's excited to see their family, and, and we would line up around the edge of the ship, and um, maybe you would see your family out there. They'd be yelling and waving their arms, and the ship would come in real slow, you know, into the pier, and uh, uh, just very excited. It was very good. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a nice time. Now they have their, the, the Navy and the Army and the military have their own airplanes. Mm -hmm. So if they have to go back on an emergency or mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. they would just take, the person would just take that airplane. Right. And they would do that kind of stuff too when I was in the Navy. If you had an emergency at home uh, and they deemed it necessary that you be home, uh, they would put you on an airplane and send you home. You know, we, we, we would do that too. I never... Fortunately, I never had to do that, so that's a good thing for me. How hard was it to return as a civilian? Um, 
You know, it, it was a little bit difficult. When I, when I got out of the Navy in 1994, uh, it, it, uh, what I liked about the Navy was that it was very structured. You know, we already talked about that a little bit. Um, there was an understanding of where you, uh, where you were in your rank when you have, you know, and that a, a person that either outranks you or underranks you. Um, some of that structure was kind of hard to me when I came out to the civilian world. It's a little bit different, you know. Um, in the military, they have a, a big emphasis on time. Uh, and in the civilian world, it's kind of relaxed to that. So uh, it was a little bit of an adjustment, but it was it wasn't too difficult. Are you a member of any veterans organization? Uh, I sure am. I am actually uh, a part of the American Legion out of Van Buren. So I am a member there. How has been? Being in the military affected your life? Oh, it's affected my life. Uh, it's huge. Okay. Uh, like I said, it gave me structure. It. Uh, I learned who I who I need to be. I became a man. Um, I. I while I was in the Navy, I learned firefighting, and I actually uh, worked for the city that I that I, uh, I lived in as a volunteer uh, firefighter, and they sent me to school. Uh, so I knew that when I got out of the Navy I wanted to be a fireman and you know currently I work for the Wabash Fire Department uh, and uh, you know the military has really uh, helped me out like that you know I mean um, it, it, is very, it looks very good on your resume uh, but I'm a firefighter and a paramedic currently uh, I also work for uh, Samaritan the helicopter you ever see that fly over your house I, I work there too. I What's that? I see the blue jets. Fire. The blue jets, yeah. So, I, I work in a in a medical helicopter too. So, uh, but all that, you know, I, I credit to the military. All my training, uh, my motivation and drive. So, the military has been very good to me, as far as even in civilian life. Mm -hmm. Do you have any lessons learned? Any lessons learned while I was in the military? Like you know. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, correct. I learned how to be a really good firefighter while I was in the Navy because can you imagine if your ship is on fire and you're out at sea, you can't call the fire department, can you, to come put it out. So you learn how to become very good firefighters. And, uh, you know, and that's kind of uh, where I got some of my first training. So, um, you know, that's some lessons learned. Um, you know, it was very good. Very good for me. There's two ways. There's your own ship that can fight it and other ships. Yeah, there is actually firefighting ships. You're correct. Mm -hmm. And even your own ship. Yeah, even my own ship has a lot of firefighting equipment. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being our interview week. We had a nice time learning about your life. Right. Very interesting. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And, and uh, as well, you guys are, are pretty cool, you know to interview an old guy like myself, so good job, uh -huh, and I got you out of class for half an hour. <laughs>